This is Chapter 4 Homework Solutions for Porterville College Physics 102A. We start with number 33. We've got the time interval of 4 seconds. We have the mass, initial velocity, and final velocity. Because they're in different directions, let's make the initial velocity be positive 2 meters per second, final velocity be negative 1.2 meters per second. So acceleration vector is change in velocity over change in time. So the difference in velocity is negative 1.2 minus 2.0. And we get an acceleration vector of negative 0 0.80 meters per second squared. The negative just means it accelerated in the direction opposite where it was originally going. Applying F equals MA, we get force equals mass times acceleration. And it's negative 0.184 newtons, but we can just say 0.184 newtons to the left. Number 35, F equals MA, I've written it like this in the stacked vector notation, F equals M times, and here's the acceleration vector. To the right, I have a picture of that vector, so we see it's going off into the second quadrant. So for the magnitude, oh, uh, force equals, when we multiply mass by both of those acceleration components, here's the vector, the X and Y components. To find the magnitude of force, it's uh, Pythagorean theorem, square root of x squared plus y squared. And we get a force magnitude of 0 0.0698 newtons. To find the angle, the angle is the arctan of the y component of force divided by the x component of force. That gives us negative 68.6 degrees. Negative 68.6 will go in this direction into the fourth quadrant we recognize from the picture that it's uh, our force and acceleration actually go into the second quadrant. So this is a situation where we add 180 degrees. So the answer is 111.4 degrees. Number 39. A good example of using Newton's third law. It's a uh, hint, use Newton's third law. So the force of acceler or the force and the acceleration, uh, we have object, I just labeled it with an A, object A and the Earth. So the force that A pulls on the Earth is the same magnitude as the, forth, the force that Earth pulls on the A, and that's just the weight of object A. So what is the force that A pulls on the Earth? Well, it's the mass of the Earth times acceleration of the Earth. What is the force that Earth pulls on A? It's the mass of A times the acceleration of A. So we get the acceleration of the Earth is the mass of A times acceleration of A, which is G, divided by the mass of the Earth. If you look at it at this line, we can just see that the acceleration of the Earth is in the numerator the weight of A but then dividing by the mass of the Earth. So we plug in the numbers, and we get the acceleration of the Earth is a very small 1.64 times 10 to the negative 21 meters per second squared. Number 45. A net force of uh, 150 newtons acts on a 5 kilogram block at rest. Find the block speed after 2.5 seconds. So this is going to be a combination of dynamics and kinematics. Here's our force diagram. F equals ma. Uh, we can use that to solve for acceleration. So acceleration is force over mass, 150 divided by 5 kilograms. So we get an acceleration of 30 meters per second squared. Now we do the kinematics. We know the initial velocity is zero, we know the time, we have the acceleration, so we can solve for final velocity. V equals V naught, which is zero, plus acceleration times time. 30 meters per second squared times the time of 2.5 seconds, and we get 75 meters per second. Number 47. 
A constant force of 35.2 newtons i hat changes the ball's velocity, and it gives the velocity, uh, the two velocities and the time. Find the ball's mass. All right, so here's the given information. F equals ma. Now, we, we could make this a vector problem, but we realize everything is going on in the i hat direction, meaning velocity started i hat, it finishes i hat, so there's no j-hat component of acceleration. There's no j-hat component of force. So we can actually just look at the, uh, the x component of everything, treat it as a one-dimensional problem. So f equals ma in the x direction means f equals mass times change in velocity over change in time. Now when we plug in these numbers, force is 35.2 newtons equals mass times, here's your change in velocity, 4.56 minus negative 3.25 and then over the time and so we get a mass of 15.77 kilograms. Number 49 Two forces act on a 24 kilogram cart, resulting in the given acceleration vector. One force is given, find the second force. All right, let's set up F equals MA. And it's two dimensional, so we're going to have to uh, treat the X and the Y. I've done this problem in the stacked vector notation. So here's F. It's 32 newtons and negative 48 newtons. That's the first force. Plus, Here's what we're trying to solve for, f of x and f of y of the second force. Equals mass times acceleration, 24 kilograms times, and here's your acceleration vector. When we break down this vector equation into two scalars, the first equation is 32 plus f of x equals, and then I multiply 24 times negative 5.17. So here it is in the x direction, 32 plus f of x equals negative 124.08. In the y direction, it's negative 48 newtons plus f of y equals, and multiply mass times the y acceleration, 60 newtons. So solve each one of these equations. Uh, when you solve the first one, you get f of x equals negative 156.1 newtons. When you do the second one, you get f of y equals 108 newtons. Written out in proper vector notation, we have it written here. The force vector is negative 156.1 newtons i hat plus 108 newtons j hat. Number 51, an Olympic bobsled starts uh, from rest, slides down a frictionless 7.5 degree slope. What's its final speed after 25 seconds? Okay, uh, we've set this up uh, many times in class before. You've got your uh, vector diagrams. I've rotated my xy coordinate system. We have normal force going in the positive y direction. We have the weight, which I've broken down into its x and y direction. So, uh, the x component is mg sine theta, the y component is mg cosine theta. We then do f equals ma in the x and y directions. In the y direction, what we get from it is n equals mg cosine theta. In the x direction, we get uh, the x component of weight is mg sine theta equals ma the m's divide out and we get an acceleration of 1.27916 meters per second squared. Once we get that acceleration, we apply kinematics. So kinematics tells us final velocity equals initial velocity, which is zero, plus acceleration times time. Plug in the acceleration that we got and we get a time of 32 seconds. For number 59, 
we can start with a equals g sine theta. Now that was something we derived from the force diagram in the previous problem, so you can refer to that, which means sine theta is a over g. The kinematics, uh, we give the given information, time is 30 seconds, initial velocity is zero, final velocity is 40 meters per second. So we take v equals v naught plus at, but we solve it for acceleration. So we get an acceleration of 40 meters per second, that's the change in velocity, divided by the time of 30 seconds, and that's 1.333 meters per second squared. Then we take our angle equation, sine theta equals a over g, so sine theta equals 1.33 divided by 9.80, and we uh, take the arc sine of that, and that gives an angle of 7.8 degrees. That's the end of part one. We'll do uh, part two, picking up with number 69.